morning people, hope you are well. Morgen zuid Afrika, hoop het gaan goed met jullie. Ons wil net so'n bykie terugvoering gee op een media bericht wat ons gesien het, waar die premier van die Ooskap kwijt geraak het. We just want to report on a matter that um, has been aired and discussed um, on ENCA by the Premier of the Eastern Cape, Oscar Mabuyane. And we need just to highlight a couple of matters which is of critical importance and why we think that, or not think, why we want government to understand that we need to address this matters as a matter of urgency. Um, our people need to be educated as a result of the challenges that we've experienced. And it's critical that we need to address this and we need to address this as a matter of importance. Um, also within the medical fraternity, traditional leadership and unions uh, needs to address these matters um, because people are ill-informed and they don't really know what happens after death. Um, and that's where we come in because we are exposed to these matters um, as an industry, as frontline workers, as emergency services and essential services. And that's not been addressed. Um, and people are not educated. Um, Maura, Jennifer, morning, Kathy. Hi, Jeanette. So, yeah, um, we saw a recent article whereby Oscar Mabuyane made the comments on ENCA that the public out there, especially within your African communities, believe that a deceased could be suffocated in a coffin, um, could be suffocated by plastic. Um, and we understand the customs and the traditions of our black people very, very well. We also understand the Hindu uh, cultures. We understand um, each and every culture uh, within our diverse country. Um, and yes, it's important that it's important that we understand and respect uh, people's cultures and traditions. And there's a variety of cultures within your African communities and within your Indian communities, um, which is not known within the public space. And we know that there's ancestors involved. We know that there's discussions of uh, mutis and nyangas involved. And if you don't understand what's a nyanga in, 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 in a Zulu culture, it's, it's a muti doctor or traditional doctor um, and traditional healers as well. And uh, people, there's a lot of myths uh, that needs to be addressed. Um, and I'll just give you a few for example, so that we can come to the point of discussion. I, uh, Rina, um, if for example, a, a African per person passes away in an unnatural death, uh, meaning an accident or a suicide or a MVA, or being shot or run over by a vehicle or drowned. The deceased is not allowed in the house. So what happens is the day when they come and dress the deceased, a family will come into the offices of a funeral parlor and there's about four to six people that normally attend such a cultural dressing within a funeral parlor. And they will normally come with a clay pot, uh, which is called a kamba in their tradition. And then what happens is a traditional doctor or a traditional healer will come in um, or they will give this muti to a family to come and take that muti and put it onto the deceased. Meaning, hello Ina, uh, more cookie. Uh, what they will do is take that muti and put it under the deceased. And where would they place that? They will place it in all the moving parts. For example, within your hands, at your wrists, in your elbows, basically where it, where it bends, under the arms, under the neck, behind the neck, the spinal area, legs, feet, every, everywhere, where there's joints. And they believe that it would then um, assist the deceased going to its ancestors. And we need to keep in mind there is huge respect within African communities with this. And in within your Indian communities, for example, they will use a mixture of butter, and seed and they will mix it and it's called ghee and that is then rubbed over the deceased remains depending on what religion they are mm. and that's important why we need
need to understand why this is done. We need to understand the rituals. We need to understand the religion and the customs and traditions, which is not, in most cases not understood. And especially within your European communities, we think, um, you know, it's, it's nonsensical. Um, but that's their culture, that's their beliefs, and that's why it's important to, to also respect that. Now, in the case of an unnatural death, going back to um, what I've initially said, a deceased will be taken to the house the day or after the person has been dressed and then taken to the house and it will remain on the outside of the house meaning under a tent or under a or in a garage or whatever the case may be in natural causes this disease will then be taken into the house where they are sleeping placed in the coffin and then you will get a lot of ladies sitting around the coffin on mattresses or blankets or whatever and the candles will be burning and that's what they refer to as a night virgil so this is happening all over the country um irrespective of whether you're christian or whether you're non-christian um but it happens. So, in the case of certain traditions, and I'm re specifically referring to the Zulu custom, if a deceased is moved out of the mortuary or is passed away at a place, for example, at an accident, they would then go to the accident scene and then to the forefather of the spirits. And then from there, or to the ancestors, from there they will move in to the actual mortuary where the post-mortem was done. And from there... They will go into the actual funeral parlor at the time after they've dressed. And then from there, they will proceed to the place where the night virtual is happening. And we must understand, and, and you know, we'll know that very well, um, what, what is all the customs and traditions. But in the Zulu custom specific, they will walk with a thin line of rope and they will walk with that with that rope with a little branch and one person no one else um, then speaks to the spirit of this deceased and when they go to at a stop street they turn left they will tell the deceased as if he's alive we will turn left left meaning turning left turning right going forward and all those type of things and it's happening people um, and people don't understand that um, and that needs to be respected because we're a very diversified custom and uh, there's a lot of issues that's happening within the funeral industry which is not commonly known. Um, myself in particular assisted the Minister of Home Affairs many years ago, uh, Malushi Gigaba, which is a Christian by the way. Um, and I told him, his brother passed away and he said to me, Yuan, um, I told him this is going to happen. He said, it won't happen. I said, okay, fine. Uh, because the younger generation doesn't take the decisions within these uh, communities. Um, your eldest takes the decisions. So what happened in this particular matter? Myself was standing outside. I think it was Peter Maritzburg somewhere. And Malusi and his wife, the then wife, came in. Um, and I said to him, it's time now. And he didn't believe me. And said, someone came in. His father's a reverend. They came in with a bottle with Muti inside um, and then they placed it all over the deceased and he asked me how to do it and I explained them and when we all walked out he said Johan um, you understand the custom better than ourselves and the same applied when Sufiso Nkabinde the late UDM leader a very vibrant person that was with Bantu Olamisa and Ruf Meyer was shot and killed in, in Richmond many years ago I also facilitated that or I was seeing that um, in the mortuary uh, where the person was dressed, they literally put that muti into the bullet wounds, and there were 17 of them. Um, and they were talking to the deceased and say, and they told the deceased that they will go back and they will revenge his death. And that's what we've seen in KZN in, in those days, and I'm talking mid-80s, 90s, where you had these faction fighting and, and, and a lot of things happened. Um, and people don't understand it. Um, and, the, and the Zulu and the Toza has got some, when it comes to customary issues, uh, there's a lot of issues that people don't understand. And in your Zulu custom, for example, if a deceased is dressed, um, and I purposely took off this button um, this morning, not to show my chest, but in any event, um, 
that the deceased is lying in the morgue, when they dress him, they cut off all the buttons. For example, like this. They will cut it off, that button if you can see. And every button um, on the shirt, they will even remove the zip of, of the trousers. And then they will enclose the deceased with that. But then what they then do is they will take calico and cut small little holes in it. And they will wrap the deceased with it. So that the, the spirit of the deceased could go back to its ancestors. And that's basically the reasoning therefore. Um, and within your Indian communities, the same thing applies. A deceased goes home. It doesn't lie in the room. It lies in a, a um, in the lounge on a white on a white um, uh, sheet, and then women would be there together with the men. But when they go to the cemetery, same thing applies. They're not allowed. The woman is not allowed there. Um, but it is also depending on what is the customs, uh, whether they're religion, whether they are Hindu, whatever the case may be. But yes, um, there's a lot of things that's happening within. Sorry for this doggy little barking a little bit. But what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of customs and traditions involved. Um, and I'm just giving you this information as, as almost a preliminary explanation of what's really happening within the funeral industry so that we can come back to what um, Oscar Mabuyane has said. Um, and there we need to hold government accountable people uh, because they do not look at they do not look at, at the, the, the customary issues. They do not understand the customary issues. And they do not educate our people. And within this pandemic, people, if people are not educated, um, they will make mistakes and they will contract a disease. Whether it's COVID, whether it's tuberculosis, whether it's AIDS, or whether it's Ebola. So those are the four, or even hepatitis. Mm -hmm. So that's the four or five diseases which is very serious and with with government not attending to our needs and our proposals about proper infrastructure at a mortuary or proper zoning of a funeral parlor in an area where it's industrialized just remember currently it's not happening so we see funeral parlors operating in between residences we see funeral parlors operating in townships next to the houses, next to butcher shops, although which is huge, it's a huge threat to our health, safety and environment. And I've explained it before that all these fluids goes into our natural drinking water systems because it's not diverted into municipal, municipal systems. And that end up in our rivers and dams, which is used by humans, um, it's used by animals, it's used by agriculture, and we need to address this. Uh, because whilst that is not in place by government in terms of legislation, we need to educate our people. So if they go into a facility, please ensure that that funeral parlor is affiliated to organizations such as FIRA and many others. But it's not happening. So what happens is a family unknowingly goes into a morgue because they are so confused and emotional that they just want to get in there, do what they need to do and get out of there. Um, so, yeah, it's difficult, people, uh, if people don't understand it because they do not understand the threats. Because they haven't researched it, they haven't been educated, they're not protected. Some of these funeral parlors do not operate in an environment which is safe, which protects the public. Uh, they do not have adequate lighting. They do not have adequate ventilation, washing facilities, sleeping quarters, um, you know, protection for their staff. And that not being in place, people, we must understand that that staff that works there goes out, they interlink with the public on a, on a burial, they meet 50, 100, 200, 500 people uh, simultaneously. We know that it's 50 now, but it's not happening. We've reported on matters where there was 350 at, um, there was 350 just recently. Uh, and you can't expect the funeral industry to play, um, you know, a service provider and a policeman. Um, it's, you can't do that. 
So that we place in front of Cocktown local government, metros, mayors, traditional leadership, unions, and the alliance parties, and also all political parties to inform um, their constituencies, inform everyone so that they educate the people. We know that the ANC had a project now uh, a few months ago whereby they had a couple of young people trained uh, to go and do what I've, I've just said. But who trains them? Who educates them? Because there is no training facility in government that addresses even their own staff or the funeral industry. Um, the inspectors are not trained in terms thereof. And, and that's critical. There's a difference between inspecting um, a factory where food are processed or a restaurant and a funeral parlor. People are scared to go into a funeral parlor. They do not do swap tests to identify whether there is, in fact, diseases. And we've seen that and we've proved it, uh, that there was tests um, done in the Eastern Cape, and we don't want to release that stats because it's disappeared. It's not that we don't want to, it's just disappeared. And everything that we've said has been exposed. Um, and we challenge government to do this, um, to check whether, in fact, there are diseases. But it's already been exposed on a number of occasions within the media, by the universities, research companies, and ourselves. Um, and that, what we say, is the, is the crunch of the problem. Not going to a funeral, not the social distancing, because the social distancing is only relevant when government deems fit to have the social distancing. It's applicable at a church. It's applicable at the beaches. It's not applicable at train stations, taxis, and airplanes. So we need to ask ourselves, how do we balance this? Uh, what's the logic about that? And, and, and that's a concern. But at a funeral parlor itself, when we talk infrastructure, there is certain challenges. And you know that was a, a, a senior forensic official within government could confirm that. Even their staff is not an inoculated. There is not sufficient um, equipment. There's not sufficient um, support functions. And I think what we need to do uh, is we need to address this. Um, I've um, been mentioned in the media that the Eastern Cape uh, which resorts under Oscar Mubiani, which just made these um, statements, was identified as one of the worst in the country. Now, we can trace that back and see why is their figures escalating in terms of COVID. Why is that happening in the Western Cape? We can show people in certain areas, there's 30, 40 funeral parlors in a congested area, you know, office park, which is, which is not compliant, a, a, a funeral parlors infrastructure needs to be compared with that of a theater, a theater environment where people are protected, whether it's healthy, it's clinically clean. And that's why we as an organization are placing that standards and putting that standards in place because it's not non-existent. And then over a period of time, assist our members to get to that standard, showing them and making them understand why it's important. There's no proper waste management in place, people. The funeral parlor, when he registers a company, he needs a health certificate or a certificate of compliance. He needs a certificate of waste management. But that's the only thing that, that, that the health inspector looks at. And um, money changes hands. So what is happening, people? That waste, how is it audited from what is used at a funeral parlor? and what is being processed. There's no auditing system. So where does that waste go? Let's ask what's happening with that. And yes, you know, there's the, you, you're 100% right um, what she says. Uh, there's a lot of fly-by-nights within this in industry, and there's a lot of suitcase operators, which means they go and rent the vehicle some, they take the deceased, they either leave him at a government mortuary because they've got a contact there, and they pay the guy 20 rand a day or whatever, the Friday, they go and pick up the deceased. They go and dress him in some facility which is not compliant. And that's where diseases are spread. Um, and, and the same applies to funeral parlors that range from another funeral parlor. If the funeral parlor that provides this facility is not licensed, is not compliant, and not trained, people will die. Um, and I've said it before, I've lost eight funeral staff 
in one company, in one particular branch that we work with TB related cases. So that's why I'm so adamant about this because we are fighting for a country to change, but we're not addressing the issue that is really the core of the disease being spread. It's not at the funerals. Um, the people can talk about social distancing. Just remember, and why I'm trying to say that we're going to give you some solutions. <clears throat> a coffin is suddenly now, a deceased has been placed in a body bag, then been placed in a coffin. There's no standards, not even an ECBS is standard. There's guidelines, but there's no standards. And that's why the width of a coffin differs from one manufacturer to another manufacturer, because they're trying to save cost because of the competitors within the industry. So the value and the standard of a actual coffin drops and it's lowered as a result of no standards. No supplier in the country is monitored by a regulating authority which is aligned to standard because of ISO standards. It doesn't exist. There's no proper SACWA standards, which is the South African qualification standards. Um, and I know that because I wrote the modules for Services CETA 99 2000 together with uh, Peter Petro, which has passed away. So, yes, myself and Ina has discussed that waste management is a problem, health and safety is a problem, environmental threats is a problem. Um, be reminded that all the body fluids that's infected with AIDS and other diseases runs into our water. So where is that contained? Now that emanates from a funeral parlor, not at a, uh, from a funeral parlor's infrastructure, not from a funeral, not from a funeral or a cremation. Now what we are saying is in the event with this COVID disease or the pandemic, why doesn't government then enforce cremations for black and white, Indian and colored? Because that's the only solution. But African people won't do that. So we need to have a, an alternative ready to supplement people that does not believe and support cremations. So what do we do? Because of the coffin not being right, the cough, the deceased is placed into the coffin. That coffin then goes into a grave site whereby the body fluids go through the coffin into the bottom, which is made out of pressed board. Being pressed board or super wood, that body fluid still goes back into our underground water systems. So that is critical. And the Riyadh is this var. And, it's, and, and you may become concerned. You may become nauseous. You want to run to the, to the, to the private places um, and just go and put your finger up your throat. It's a fact, people. It's happening. And, and if we do not address this, Remember, those people that works in a morgue goes home. They release these viruses within our communities. They go and buy food in a shopping center. They go into malls. They go and swim together. They go and bath together. They eat together. So this virus, if we do not control the actual funeral parlors operations, it's going to spread. And it's not going to stop. Because there's aspects that's not been addressed by government. So what I'm just trying to say to you is we need to address this matters. So what do we do? Because no one has even thought about it. A coffin and a body bag disintegrates. It's a fact. It happens. People are not allowed to view their loved ones. We've developed a product. And you would have seen yesterday that we put up a factory in partnership with other people um, and joint ventures, which we can take and ensure 100% that no disease will be spread. Just by fixing the actual coffin scenario. So that is, there can be no um, diseases being spread because it's contained in a container within a coffin within a glass piece so that you can even identify the disease, which we've seen over the last few months because what is now happening, you can't, you can't view a deceased because it's body bag. So how do you know who do you bury? 
So that causes another problem. We had that in the Eastern Cape where the sea got missing. Two, as a matter of fact. Uh, one about a few months back and one two, three weeks ago where the EFF contacted us and seeked our assistance. So what we are trying to say is let's provide the educational functions. Let's provide the training. Let's assist the people. Because if we control that, we will then be allowed to attend a funeral in numbers. Mm -hmm. That is what is currently happening. So we need to address this, people. And please share this, especially our nominated councillors. Share it within your constituencies. Political leaders, share this message with your people. And as the UIM and as the chairman of FIRA, we will keep government accountable, but we cannot, we cannot be penny-wise and pound-foolish and hold that information to ourselves. Because whilst we have the solutions and we hold it to ourselves, we need to address this with people and hand it out to the public out there so that they are informed and take informed decisions. And remember, because of the funeral industry, not being properly regulated. They are also not trained. So if they do not know what to do, their staff may pass away. And if their staff passes away as a possible disease, which has been uh, accumulated at a funeral parlor or um, contracted at a funeral parlor, that business um, owner, business could be cl closed down because civil lawsuits could be insured. Remember, there is no union within the funeral industry. There's no bargaining council within the funeral industry. So that's what I'm trying to say. And it's my, my main objective or our main objective is to provide the solutions to stop the health and safety um, issues, the environmental impact. And we had discussions, people, with Nomvula Mokunyane. We had discussions with um, the premiers. We had discussions with each and every political leader. It went through to the portfolio committees. We've spoken to the Law Reform Commission, DTI, everyone. And because of the sensitivity of these matters, it's not being addressed. Because people are scared to talk about death. It's a fact. We don't want to talk about it. But if we do not talk about it, how are the South African public going to be protected? We see this disease and unfortunately now, because of that not happening, we will remain in a lockdown. And that is what we want to try and prevent. Because there is an increasing number which is identified within research. There is media reports that confirms that. But where does the challenge lie? Because we do not look, we, we go 10 meters down the line to address issues. 10 meters, we need to go to the fire. What starts the fire? And that's where the start of the fire is with a funeral parlor, which infrastructure is not compliant. Of a funeral parlor, which is not properly inspected and evaluated. Imagine yourself, what, and I'm just giving sharing ideas, because I don't want to talk too long. Imagine a child, and we all grew up as children, and what is the nicest thing to play with? Is a syringe and a glove. Put water in there, you blow it up, you squirt someone, you throw someone with... And that is happening because your funeral parlor, because there's no waste management, these kids in townships or even in suburban areas take these syringes which they pick up somewhere and they play with it. So what happens? That child will die. And that's why we need to address these people through a educational process. We need to take this message that I've just shared with you outside into communities. Um, and we've seen that. And, and, and people within government is unfortunately reluctant to talk about that um, because they are scared of their work, of their employment, of their bosses about government. But if we do not address this, people, we're going to sit with a country that's going to die we're going to wipe out a nation, not only in South Africa. We've seen it with the Nigerian disaster. Um, Ebola then started emerging. So if we do not contain that, we will go from COVID to AIDS to tuberculosis and then into Ebola. And, and what is happening? It will be a disaster in the making because, one, your funeral pool is not right. Secondly, your supply chain in terms of coffins is not right. 
your services CETAs is not adequate because they outsource that. And when we said, let an independent observer such as ourselves sit on each and every portfolio committee relevant to the funeral industry. Remember, there's 12 laws which is not within your municipal bylaws. So if it's not in the bylaws, how can a funeral parlor operate within the law if there's only one law that they refer to? So it, it, we, don't, we don't even have a standard operating procedure. Um, and we've developed our own in-house. Um, and people will also want access to that information. And we invite them. To, you, we can have access to the information. But let's affiliate to an organization which is independent, which is not your competitor, but reaches out and fulfills the responsibility of government, which has neglected the funeral industry's needs as well as the consumer's needs. And I think that needs to be addressed. And we just want to, in, in closing, say to Oscar Mobuyane, I, as you under so, has shared that information with you. Uh, you're on my WhatsApp. Um, just as much as I've shared it with Jack Bloom and the Freedom Front and even Dalian Porfu, Good, uh, the Good Party, the ANC, Salga, um, Sanaku, people we've shared it with everyone. We share these messages with the media. But unfortunately, the media only addresses one particular matter. They don't look at it holistically. And that's why the focus is on a problem area, not on the solution. Because we must remember that the media needs to sell newspapers. Um, and that's the problem that we've got. If we do not address these people, people are going to die more and more and more. And we want to reach out. Um, I'll, I will arrange that. Um, if people want to go and visit the crematorium from an educational perspective, not to see all the graphic scenes, because there is no graphic scenes at a crematorium. People say, but three, four, five people are cremated together. It's absolute, absolute nonsense. One coffin can go in there, goes into the top, and it's cremated, and it goes down to a bottom steel plate. It comes out, and then it's processed. So what I'm just trying to say is, people, let's work together. Let's share this because this is not discrediting, trying to discredit everyone. We are trying to say to government, listen, implement what we've proposed, what we've identified, even within the current laws and the Health Act 63 of 2013. It has been amended without the consent and consultation of the funeral industry, which ultimately means it is unconstitutional. So we need to address that. And then from there, then take the identified gaps and challenges that we've identified in a four-year research plus 30 years um, experience. Plus, there's 170 gray areas. We do not want to uh, muscle the funeral industry. We don't want to muscle government and power play with them. But let's get it implemented. Because if there's a standard... We do not need to um, have 20,000 inspectors. The funeral parlor then follows the law. Um, and you just guide that, monitor that. And then from there, you then go out and you've got these monitors supporting, reaching out there, to them. But because it's not there, we are currently doing, doing that. And you would have noticed the photos that we placed the other day. It's a funeral parlor which was small which bought a building and it was totally not up to standard. And we gave advice to them. And today they've got an excellent standard, just as all our other members and our accredited networks. But remember, within an unregulated environment, who will invest money into that? No one. So what we do is if we create a standard, banking institutions, financial services companies will then assist to get to uh, compliant, but we can only cr create a developmental and transformation approach within this industry. If you've got a legislative platform that enables economic development and job creation, which we don't have, because this industry is manipulated by a few individuals, even within the manufacturing sector, and we need to change that around because the standard and um, standards of the products 
is not what it's supposed to be. And that's why diseases have been spread. But we've got the solutions, people. We need to reach out to government and say to them, if you don't like what we are doing politically, let's put that aside. Let's look at South Africa. Let's look at our people. Let's look in protecting them. Let's look at the industry players, which has been neglected, the forensic officials, which has been neglected. And yes, um, ultimately, we just need to address these matters and we need to address it efficiently to protect South Africa and its people. And Cheryl, um, my personal opinion about it, it's, it's a, p a personal choice. Um, you know, I think with, with, the, with the standards of, of cemeteries not being um, safe, which is not being upkept, a lot of people are going for, for cremations, and that's understandable. But that creates opportunity. If government can't do it, let's establish private um, cemeteries. I would love to be buried one day. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities. Out of the problem areas, there's a lot of opportunities and business opportunities. But we don't want to chase money. We want to chase solutions. We want to bring change. And that's one of the reasons I believe that uh, the UIM and Neil De Beer uh, stood up and said, we support what you are saying. Let's bring back dignity. Let's bring back respect. And let's protect our people. God bless. Enjoy the rest of your day.